Hi, I am so excited to begin um, my journey with my doctorate with a focus in literacy in curriculum and instruction. And specifically, I am excited to dive into teaching phonics with a multi-sensory approach. So I am excited to talk about the why and then the physical aspect of it um, for the multi-sensory. So just a quick about me, I have my master's in reading from Grand Canyon. I went to Clemson for my bachelor's. So super excited to begin my journey for curriculum instruction and literacy. I have two certifications through Orton Gillingham, which is a multi-sensory approach to teaching reading. I am, a, am currently a content writer for an education company, specifically a reading company. And I have created and patented a multi-sensory tool, and I love supporting parents and teachers with, with their students. So today I'm going to just quickly share about some research for the reading in the brain and then about Otter tools. So the simple view of reading just basically says, if you take what the student can decode and multiply it by their language comprehension, then you're going to basically get their reading comprehension. So if they can decode, and if they have language comprehension, then they can comprehend what they're reading. But if they can't decode, but they have language comprehension, they're not going to have comprehension of reading because they are not able to fluently read. So this explains the importance of both pieces for them to be able to comprehend what they're reading. I love Scarborough's rope to um, really show the importance of each aspect of decoding, phonological awareness, sight word recognition, vocabulary, background knowledge, language structures, literacy knowledge, and verbal reasoning. Like I said earlier, they have to have each part for them to be a skilled reader. And you cannot have one thing without the other. They both have to be tightly woven together for them to be successful. Nancy Young's ladder, I think, does a very good job of showing the necessity of phonics and um, the all the research has shown that it is phonics instruction supports um, the best way for kids to learn to read and um, in fact it is supported by brain research as well. The, um, the latter shows just the percentages of how many students need phonics to be successful and there are right now about 65% of our students in fourth grade that are not reading on grade level. So something has to be done and it is an epidemic. Something has to be done now. So I'm super excited to be able to be taking a stand for these kids and to uh, passionately fight for them and support them in their reading journey. So phonics and morphology, when being taught, it should be synthetic, explicit, sequential, and decodable. It is not for the sake of creating um, a love of literacy. So kids can be taught phonics and still love reading. We're not keeping books from them because they can't decode them. There's still the possibility of combining both. And what, but what the kids are reading should be supported by what you, has already been taught to the kids in um, the school, in their school day. And orthographic mapping is super important for students to be able to hold on to the words and the skills that they're learning. And orthographic mapping just refers to connecting spelling and reading with the words meaning for them to hold on to it. So orthographic actually is a fun word. Ortho means straight, like orthodontist. Graph means to write. So we're just keeping it all straight in our brains and mapping it out. Uh, so the multi-sensory approach is just teaching reading. So teaching everything that I just talked about using each of the senses. So when teaching, you've involved the kinesthetic, the tactile, the visual, the auditory, the sense of um, smell, sense of taste if possible. So just incorporating all the senses. Now, I know a lot of teachers, they think immediately, well, I teach older kids. Just the simple act of putting pencil to paper is multi-sensory. So if you think that you teach without using a multi-sensory approach, 
you're wrong. You 100% do because you are auditorily speaking to the children. They see it visually on the board and then they write. So that's three senses and you didn't even have to think twice about it. Um, Multi-sensory approach, according to the Center for Effective Reading Instruction and the International Dyslexia Association, improves phonemic awareness, phonics, and reading comprehension skills. The approach is engaging and motivating, so kids are excited to take part in it and have their hands on and are engaged in their learning. And because they're engaged in their learning, it helps focus the student's attention on what they're learning. So I am using Otter tools specifically as my multi-sensory tool. Otter stands for Optimizing Tactile Teaching to Engage Readers. It is a multi-sensory tool for students to practice phonemic awareness, decoding, encoding high frequency words and morphology. And students can build thousands of words to practice skills needed to be successful readers. So these are just some examples of skills that students can practice with the Otter tools. The, heart, the pieces that you see in the heart, it's those are the sight words. The heart pieces mean that they have to learn those parts by heart. And then the skills are all color coded to add that visual piece. All the pieces pull apart to add that tactile piece, that tactile piece. And when students echo and say it out loud as they build the word, that ties in the auditory. Uh, so the green are glued sounds, the pink are vowels and vowel teams. Uh, and even throwing in the syllable types and Latin and Greek and prefixes and suffixes. Um, it's just definitely something that can start at the beginning and grow all the way through with the kids. So I'm really excited to be able to combine reading in um, the brain and this to determine how helpful that this will be for um, our students. There are plenty of other multi-sensory examples that can be used outside of the Otter tools, the builders. So you can use screens, coding by marking vowels or consonants or other skills. Use out kind of boxes for phonemic awareness, fun alliteration like C, Sally, Snake. Use Play-Doh to build letters, gel boards for tracing, making hop and clap sounds or syllable types. They can use crayons and markers, sand, rice trays, skywriting, tracing, echoing, hand motions, tapping, magazines to cut out, to look for pictures that match sounds or use it to build their writing skills. There's so many different things that students can use to get their hands on and engaged in their learning. And I am super passionate about combining that multi-sensory for engagement and the research of phonics and combining those two for students to be successful. And in my dissertation, I'm going to be specifically focusing on Otter tools. And I am so excited to begin. Um, and so like I said, this is um, my here's my references and I got my some of the information from Reading Rockets, which is a great resource for finding all sorts of information on reading and literacy and the brain and everything else that you can imagine.